Well, joining us now is real estate expert Michael Hellickson. He's president of the Short Sale Company and, of course, Hellickson Real Estate. Michael is one of our endorsed local providers, one of the people we endorse around America. He's over in the Seattle area and is working short sales hand over fist, doing a lot of it. And, uh, and you know, this, this real estate market tightening up and people facing different kinds of issues, we thought it'd be valuable to have a guy on who's a practitioner, who's hands-on, and this is what he does every day. I know how to do this stuff. I know what the theories are. I talk you through that stuff all the time, but I always learn something when I get a hold of somebody who's actually doing stuff today, and they're out there uh, with tools in their hands today making things happen. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate the time. Well, awesome. It's good to have you, man. Thanks for being here. All right, let's start with the basics because uh, the media has thrown around this term and has made a term that you and I have known for years. It's become like a household name in the last six months. Short sale. I'm going to short sale my house. Do I short sale? Should I short sale? Short sale, short sale. Are we having a sale of shorts? No, we're not. What is a short sale? You know, ultimately, a, a short sale refers to a short payoff transaction or any real estate transaction where the the price that is paid for the home is not enough to cover the mortgage, any under, other underlying debts, as well as the real estate closing costs, title fees, escrow fees, real estate commissions, and those sort of things. So with, with over uh, 7,000 new foreclosures every day and, and one out of 1,000 homes in, in America uh, being put in this position, there are an awful lot more short sales happening now than ever before. Hey, are you guys experiencing tons of this in Seattle? We are. You know, our marketplace is about eight months behind the rest of the country in this uh, trend. We were doing a lot more work in uh, Florida, Arizona, uh, Las Vegas, and Michigan uh, than, uh, about eight months ago than, uh, than we were in Seattle, but all of a sudden our marketplace is catching up as well. Okay. So what does, a, what does it cost a homeowner to do a short sale, to have one negotiated? You know, it, it really depends on who does the negotiating. Uh, ultimately, it shouldn't cost the homeowner anything. Uh, there are some companies out there that charge upfront fees for that negotiation service. Uh, I, I have a real problem with anyone paying a fee for a, a service that has not been performed yet. And uh, ultimately, uh, in, in a short sale situation, the, the negotiator's fee should come out of the bank's proceeds at closing. Uh, and, and I do believe that it should be a professional negotiation company, whether it's ours or another one. Uh, there's a real value to having that service performed by someone, particularly when the homeowner doesn't foot the bill for it. So now, do you do that in addition to a real estate commission? Because I know you're a realtor. I am. You know, uh, generally speaking, the, the negotiation fee comes out of the listing agent's commission. And the reason for that is, historically, you know, 17 years ago when we did our first short sales, uh, it was the listing agent themselves that, that negotiated the short sale. And uh, while that worked 17 years ago, today's market has become much more complex. Uh, the number of transactions the banks are dealing with uh, have become so overwhelming that uh, for a listing agent to try and sell the home and uh, negotiate the actual short, uh, short payoff transaction uh, is almost impossible. It's just far too time consuming. A typical short sale can take upwards of 60 hours of staff time to negotiate. Uh, and, and that's really due to the banks being overwhelmed. You know, they. Uh, Previously had, uh, you know, three years ago, a typical negotiator at the bank would have 150 files on their desk. Right now, uh, for example, at Countrywide, a, a typical negotiator at Countrywide could have upwards of 700 files on their desk at any given time. Uh, so what do you do to get yours to get a, to get your file to get attention out of 700? You know, there's 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 a lot of things that can be done to to get at that extra attention. One of the most common mistakes that is is not calling the bank enough, and I would say equally as common as calling the bank too often. It's important to note that we're, you're not dealing with a bank, you're dealing with a person at the bank. And uh, like any other person, if you're calling that person every single day about the same issue that they told you they were going to get back to you in a few days on, th they're going to get a little bit frustrated with that and they're likely to put your file on the bottom of their 700 file stack and may not ever look at it again. Um, so I would say it's important to have enough contact with the bank, but not so much that you alienate the negotiator at the bank. Now are you seeing a difference as to uh, conforming mortgages, Fannie Mae, FHA, VA, uh, versus uh, some of the subprime mortgages that are out there in terms of whether they're negotiating and at what point they're negotiating what they're requiring? You know, a lot of it depends on whether or not it's an, an insured mortgage. Um, all of them are being negotiated at some point. Uh, the, the difference is the complexity with which those negotiations take place and how many parties are involved in that negotiation process. Uh, if it's an insured mortgage, for example, you'll have more layers of, of parties that need to be negotiated with, and oftentimes, the lien holder, they might have an investor, they might have a mortgage insurance company, um, you know, if this thing has been sold on the secondary market. 
that can add to the complexity. Uh, and, and one of the challenges is frequently and more often than not, you will not be able to get access to every person that has a say in whether or not this transaction closes. So you've got to do the best you can with the ones you do have access to.